welcome to Home Sweet Homeschool. If you're new here, my name is Ashley and I'm a homeschooling mom to one. And in today's video, we're gonna talk all about notebooking. If you watched my video from last week where we talked all about the dinosaur unit from Gather Round, I shared that we did something a little bit different with that unit than we had done with previous units. And we did something called notebooking. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you how I found out about notebooking, where you can go and find out more about it. And then I'm going to share with you how we use it in our home and show you our examples in case you missed my last video. So notebooking. I found out about this through a channel here on YouTube called Ellen Fisher. That's her name. She's more of a lifestyle channel. She is not a homeschool channel. But if you do a search for Ellen Fisher homeschool or Ellen Fisher notebooking, you're going to go right to the episodes that you need to see. Her kids are younger than mine. I have a 13 year old. So if you want to see how this notebooking is used with younger children, those are excellent videos to check out. So this is what I use to find out more about notebooking. So in her video, she mentions a person named Jody Mockaby who has created this notebooking manual and it's something that Jody Mockaby uses in her family. So this is what it looks like. It's called Schoolhouse Curiosities Notebooking Manual. It's just 13 pages. It's not a huge book. And if you go to the website, which I'm going to link below, it's $13. So I pay $13 for this PDF and then you can just leave it on your device or you can print it out. I'm more of a, like having a hard copy kind of person. So I wanted to print it out so I could really read through it and use it. So like I said, the website for this will be linked below and you can go get yourself a copy. I'm gonna show you kind of what's in here, but if you want your own copy, you can head there and pick that up. So um, that's the notebooking manual. So what I urge you to do first is to watch those videos of Ellen's and to read through this manual so that you will have some kind of idea of what notebooking is. Now, it will tell you on the very first page, it gives just a brief introduction that notebooking is just a way to simplify the elements of language arts to show proof of progress. You can work on your handwriting, your artistic skills. All of those things can be covered through notebooking. Um, it talks about how you can use notebooking to cover all of your subjects, um, your experiences, and it's just a way to document what has been learned. And so she'll explain all of that in this first page. It does say to use this manual just as a loose resource and to really make it work for your family. Now she gives you a list of all the resources you need and all the brands that they use. So if you wanna do it exactly like her, she has this list here for you. Now, in our house, we're not huge artists. That's just not something that we do. So while I did look at this, I didn't go and buy all of these things and exactly what she has. I will link in the description box everything that we used. You can find them on Amazon. You can also find them at stores like Michael's. I'm going to show you really quick what we use. So in our breakfast nook where we usually do our notebooking, I just keep this little metal caddy that I bought at um, Hobby Lobby, but you can find these anywhere. You can use any kind of a basket. And sorry, that's loud. In that basket, I have our watercolors. Now these are not amazing high quality watercolor because like I said, we're not artists, but it works for us. Uh, especially if you have younger kids, you know, the, it works. This one I think I got at Pop Shelf, which is like some new store that just opened for $5. You can find these at Five Below. This one I got at Michael's and for what we use them for, they work perfectly fine. Now, if you are into art, and you like to buy the more expensive watercolors, that's fine. Do what works for your family. This is what works for us. So I keep this in the bucket and I have a little mason jar obsession. I keep a mason jar full of paint brushes and these are from Michael's. And then I just keep an extra one for water so they don't get mixed up with their drinking glasses because they look exactly the same. And then I keep Another glass jar with some colored pencils that are separate from what he uses on a daily basis. And then I also keep the most awesome pencil sharpener in the whole entire world. We've been using this since I taught school. It's been going strong for years now. It's an Exacto School Pro. I'm telling you, you need yourself one of these if you homeschool. We keep this here to sharpen our colored pencils. So, those are like the painting and drawing supplies. Now, she recommends... Um, 
like Ticonderoga pencils and things like that and the binders that they use and the watercolor and the cardstock. But I just go to Walmart and I buy the white cardstock and that works out perfectly fine for us too. Um, you'll need a laminator and some laminating pouches if it's something that you want to save and I'll show you what ours look like. And I've been using my laminator for years now and I love it. Um, so I'll link it below also. So these are just the things that she uses. Again, you're gonna have to just make it work for your family. The next thing you're gonna find in the manual is how to set the scene. This should be an enjoyable process. One that's very calming, one where they feel like they can share and draw. And so she tells you about how to kind of set up the scene. And I'm just gonna be honest with you. Um, in our house, the first couple of times we did this, it wasn't this beautiful because in our real life, we didn't know how to do it. And when my son ever like has to try something new and he's never done it, he gets kind of anxious. And then that turns into an almost meltdown. So it wasn't this beautiful, perfect scene when we first started. So if it's kind of rough for you in the beginning, that's okay. Um, but she tells you how you can set the scene to make it an enjoyable process. So definitely read that. And I will give you some encouragement. It did get better. The more that we did it, the better it got. So that was good. So this tells you all about narration and illustration, which is a huge part of notebooking. Um, it tells you how to play around with it with your family and make it work for you. With notebooking, after you do whatever it is, you go on your trip or your kids read a book or you do your unit study, as in our case, your child's going to pick an illustration that kind of relates to what they just learned. They'll pick them an illustration and... Um, then they'll narrate it. So they just choose an image that goes with it. They need to think about um, what they want it to look like. You could print pictures for them. They could sketch the pictures, whatever they need to do to get their illustration down on that paper. And then they need to think about what they're going to write on there. She says that a lot of their images they pull from Google and their kids copy those images onto their paper, but really you just make it work for your family. Um, so what you're going to do first is you give your child the paper. They're going to draw it first with a pencil. That just makes it easier. I always kept an extra eraser out, a really good gum eraser out so he could erase well. And you just let them draw. That's enjoyable for them to get out their illustration and put it on paper. You want to encourage them to do their best work. I mean, if this is what you're getting from our unit study, I told my son, you know, this is the work I'm going to see. Like, what did you learn during our unit study? So do your best work. And you can gauge whether or not your kids are trying their best. You kind of have to set the expectations for your family or for your children. Um, if they are frustrated, you just remind them of why we're doing it, remind them of what their expectations are, and you keep going. You can also use colored pencils or watercolor pencils, or in our case, we just use watercolor to fill it in. So that's what this page is gonna tell you all about. Now, for narration, she talks about how she does it. She sits there beside her child with the computer, and as they are talking, she is typing what they're saying, or she'll take what they're saying and turn it into something more manageable for them to write. So that really depends on the age of your child. You know what your child is capable of. So if they're five, they might can get one good sentence out. So take what they're saying and give them one complete sentence. Maybe increase it to two sentences as they move to age six. You kind of decide what you want your children to do or what they're capable of. So you sit close enough to them. You want to be connected to your kids while they're sharing. They tell you what they want to write about and you can let them talk as long as they want to and retell whatever it is and condense it down to their writing level, like I said. Um, you can stop and talk, and I did this with my son. If he was using a very basic word like dig, I would say, can we use a more sophisticated word? Can you come up with a sophisticated word for dig? And he said, how about excavate? And I'm like, that sounds wonderful. So you're encouraging the use of better vocabulary. You're talking about punctuation. You're talking about correct spelling. So this is an excellent time to do all of those things. So as you can see here, she's typed this out for her child and that's what her child will copy. Okay. So you can go sentence by sentence, whatever works for your family. You're just going to simply take down what they said. I did not do it on the computer. I just kept out a spiral notebook and we would take what he said and put it into a nice 
um, paragraph using the vocabulary, using correct punctuation, and he would copy from the spiral notebook. So really whatever works in your home is what works, right? Um, your children can also type out the narration themselves if you want them to, and then you can go through and edit it right there on the computer, and then they can take that and write it down. It's really up to you, whatever works for your kids. Um, once they're, they have, you've given them their paragraph on their paper, and you probably won't be able to see it, but you're gonna take a ruler, and on that paper by their illustration, you're gonna draw them some lines so that they can write neatly in a line and their writing is not all over the place or going uphill or all that kind of stuff. Um, it is a good recommendation, and it was hard for my son to remember this. It's better if they do their illustration in one of the bottom corners. My son didn't always do that, and we just made it work. But she talks about that. Encourage your kids to use their best handwriting. That's what I told my son. We're not doing a handwriting program. Use your best handwriting on these notebooking pages. And then you can put the, their name and date at the bottom if you need them to. I only have one child, so he doesn't have to put his name on there. So that tells you more in depth if you read it, more about the narration process. Now, to finish the work, you are going to want to... Um, this is what I did with my son. We would go over his drawing with a finishing pen, and what we use for that is this Micron. It came with a set of three. I picked these up at Walmart, but you can find them at Michael's. You can find them on Amazon. I'll leave them below. These are good finishing pens because you can paint over them, and they do not smear. So, um, he's going to go over his work that he wrote in pencil, with one of those finishing pens. We're gonna erase all the pencil marks that are on there with our gum eraser. And then he just paints over it. He chooses a really nice background color and he paints over the page and that just gives it this final touch. So we just let it dry. Um, I would stack those up and occasionally I would sit down and laminate them. So I'll show you what that looks like in a second. She also recommends that you can use this for hymns that you're studying, poetry, memory verses. There are so many ways to use notebooking, and I'm sure you can find a way to use it in your homeschool. And then she talks about how to store it. They store them in notebooks. I haven't figured out what I wanted to do with mine yet, but I'll show you what ours looks like. So I do encourage you, I just dropped that. I do encourage you to buy that PDF so that you can read all the information there is about it. But I will say that we loved doing this notebooking and it was a great way for me to see what my son learned from the dinosaur unit without having to fill out a worksheet. I personally think worksheets are super boring. Anybody can fill out a worksheet and they don't always tell you exactly what your kids thought were the most important things out of that lesson. And I know that looking back on worksheets, it's not very memorable but this would be. And so I was really excited about um, doing this with my son. So I did show this in our dinosaur unit. So I'm just going to show like our dinosaur unit um, that I just talked about. I'll show a few of what our pages look like in case you didn't catch that video. So this was our first one. This was our first day. We didn't really know what to do or what to expect. So this is what we got, just a couple of lines. I didn't even take down what he wrote that day. He kind of started writing before I even got to it. So this was the first day. And then on the second day, we were like, okay, hold up a minute. Let's think of an illustration. Let's think of what we want to write. And so it did get better as we went. So these are laminated, so there is a glare on them, and I'm sorry. And so as you can see, this was the day that I actually drew the lines. So by our third time doing it, I drew the lines, and we were doing it the correct way at the time. And so he just worked on this after each day. So we use Gather Round as our core in our homeschool. We have, this is our third year. And sometimes I just don't want to use the worksheets that come with it. And I thought this would be an excellent way to show what we know. So as you can see, some days he wrote a lot and some days not so much. And that's okay. I was like, this is our first time. So I'm going to go easy on him. And I just want him to enjoy it and learn what it looks like to notebook. And then the next time we do it, um, you know, we will know what to do. We understand the process better. So that's kind of what that is. And I feel like he just got better and better about offering more information. He understood the process more. He 
you know, took the time. That one's a little hard to see because it's gray. He took the time to do the illustrations, and I just really felt like they got better as he went. I'm sorry about the glare. So, that's notebooking. That's exactly what we did. And like I said at the beginning, you can use this with any curriculum. You can use this with any subject. I'm not sure about math, but if you can find a way, that's great. If you have any questions about notebooking, homeschool, gather round, anything like that, let me know in the comments below. Like I said, I'll have links to all the things that we use and a link to where you can find the manual. And as always, thank you so much for watching.